Hey you guys, it's Jen at Jen's Haunts and today I'm at the amazing Winchester Mystery House. What you're looking at behind me is the Shooter's Gallery. You can take a little bit of film out here, but you can't take any inside the actual house. So I'll have to do pictures and a voiceover. But I'm gonna be, I'm gonna give you the best experience I possibly can and like a lot of pictures. So you might wanna have a seat and get yourself a cup of coffee. I'll see you inside. Hey you guys, in order to give you a better look at who Sarah Winchester was, I did some digging and this is what I found out. Sarah Paradis was five of seven children to Leonard and Sarah, born in 1839. Sarah's family was upper middle class living in New Haven, Connecticut. Sarah was gifted and by age 12, she had mastered five languages. She was considered quite beautiful and earned the title, the Belle of New Haven. Sarah attended Yale University and studied liberal arts, science, and math. William Winchester was the only son born to Oliver and Jane on June 22nd, 1837. It was said that William was often in poor health. William and Sarah traveled in the same social circles and his sister was Sarah's classmate in college. Both families went to the same church. Sarah and William married on September 30th, 1862. On July 12th, 1866, Sarah had a baby girl. They named Annie. She had a rare disease named marasmus. She could not absorb protein and nutrition. Annie died just 40 days later on July 25th, 1866. This was a horrific loss for William and Sarah. William's father, Oliver, passed on December 11th, 1880 at the age of 70 leaving the New Haven Arms Company to William. But on March 7th, 1881, William died of tuberculosis. He was only 43. William was laid to rest in the family plot with Oliver and Annie at Evergreen Cemetery in New Haven, Connecticut. With William passing, Sarah was now the wealthiest woman in the world with 50% holdings in the Winchester Arms Company and $20 million. That's roughly $530 million in 2019. Sarah collected $1,000 a day. Sarah went on a three year world tour after the death of William. At some point, she began to study Francis Bacon. He taught numerology and higher levels of insight. Some say Sarah's house is one big numerology puzzle with messages everywhere. After the American Civil War in 1865, it became popular to seek out a medium to speak with your dearly departed. And that is just what Sarah did. The medium told Sarah that the death in her family was due to all of the angry spirits killed by the Winchester rifle. Sarah was told that she must move out west and build a house big enough to accommodate all of them or become a target herself. In 1884, Sarah moved to San Jose, California with two of her sisters and their families, one being Isabel, her older sister, and her niece, Miriam Daisy. Sarah purchased an eight bedroom farmhouse with 161 acres of farmland. Sarah did build for 38 years and she was never alone in the house. Her favorite niece, Daisy, lived with her for 15 years. Work on the house was 24 hours a day with a night crew and a day crew to keep the ghosts at bay. She employed 18 gardeners, 18 servants, a nurse, companion, and family always around. 
By 1906, the house was seven floors. April 18th, 1906, at 5.12 a.m., Sarah is sleeping in the Daisy bedroom when the San Francisco earthquake hits. The devastation is immense. Sarah is trapped in her room and had to be found and dug out by workmen. The house you see today is only three floors. Sarah cleaned up the damage and locked the door and abandoned that side of the house. Over the years, Sarah spared no expense. It is said that she would travel and purchase the finest woods and exotic materials from Japan, France, and Britain. Beautiful wallpaper and stained glass. But the stained glass you see is not all Tiffany's. During a recent renovation at the Winchester, workmen found a envelope in the wall. It contained a stamp for John Mullen, a glass artist in the late 1800s. The stamp read Pacific American Decorative Company. Sarah loved spider webs and the number 13. With webs in the glass and 13 spokes on the railing and her will had 13 sections, which she signed 13 times. Also found over and over again, groupings of three and seven. These are all very important numbers in numerology. Over the years, Sarah made a house that worked for her. Little steps she used later in life due to her arthritis. Her secretary is her niece, Miriam, seeing or delegating to all of Sarah's needs. With all the latest technologies of the times, gas lighting, indoor plumbing, tube intercom system, later electric lighting, generator heat, and a location board. Sarah would hit a button when she needed something, which would drop a card below to indicate her location in the house. And let's not forget the door to nowhere that leads in a nice drop into the garden below. Maybe helpful when you're escaping a ghost or stairs that go to nowhere to confuse. The Winchester Mansion is over 24,000 square feet with 160 rooms, plenty to hide in from a ghost. But none of the furniture that you will see is original. And if you look closely, you'll see a few cracks in the walls from the San Francisco earthquake. With 2,000 doors and 10,000 windows, all the doors have beautiful glass windows, even the bathrooms. Hopefully that's not original. But with the less dark places, the harder for ghosts to hide in. So at this point, you may be wondering, did I see something weird? Did I hear a voice? Well, to my surprise, in creating this video, I realized that I did catch something odd in a photo of the stairs to nowhere. I will give you a really good look at that at the end of this video. Maybe Sarah just liked to spend money with her 47 stairways, but the people she employed earned two to three times what they would anywhere else. Many worked for her for over 30 years. Sarah always provided breakfast and dinner for everyone. With 13 bathrooms, one shower fit just for her. Sarah was 4'10 and 95 pounds. She had six kitchens and Sarah also built the Winchester Chest Clinic in New Haven in the name of her husband and donated to orphanages in honor of her daughter, Annie, the little girl she did not get to keep. One wine cellar that she had boarded up due to a dark handprint on the wall probably left by her servant, and three elevators. One beautiful conservatory with birds and plants and 52 skylights. Why so many skylights and windows? So the ghosts do not have a dark place to hide or corners. With 47 fireplaces and so many glass windows, 
and a servant to tend to the fires. There was no insulation at this time. Every fireplace must have been necessary. The seance room is the only room with bars in the windows with a secret escape door that leads to an unfinished room, but it does have heat. The seance room has one entrance and three exits. Sarah had the only key. It is said that she would contact spirits to help her with building plans or to try to talk to her husband. And for ghost stories, there are plenty. The man on the left is Clyde. He is known to hang around the wood-burning furnace. A man with a wheelbarrow full of ash or coal, still hard at work, tending to the fireplaces. And if you take the tour, you may feel a gentle tug on your clothes. It's said that there are footsteps in the water tower. Security guards have heard talking or walking on the third floor level servants' quarters, only to find nothing when investigated. Dark shadows that are human shaped there, but then gone in a blink. Faces in the windows and in the hallways. But in the end, Sarah lived to be 82 years. She died September 5th, 1922. After her death, her foreman, John Hansen, who worked for her for over 32 years and met with her every morning to discuss her ever-changing house plans. And his two sons, who grew up on the farm, tried to tell the paper how nice and generous Sarah was, but that didn't seem to be the story they were looking for. When Sarah passed, work stopped immediately. It is said nails are left half in the wall, hammers abandoned on the floor. Sarah left everything in the house to her most beloved niece, Miriam Daisy. Anything that she didn't want was given up to auction. Everyone who worked for Sarah was named and left something in her will. A hidden safe was discovered in the ballroom. This created quite a stir. What would the wealthiest woman of her time have in a hidden safe? Just four items were found. Her husband and her child Annie's hair and their obituaries. I think this says everything about Sarah's loss. Not in the will? was the house and the farm. It was put up for auction and was sold for roughly $135,000 and opened to the public five months later. Sarah had invested $5.5 million in her home, but it was deemed unsafe and not properly repaired after the earthquake. So what do you think? Is the Winchester Mystery House haunted? Did she open a portal or call spirits to her with her seances? Maybe creating what she feared most? Or was the death of her husband and her child the thing that broke her mind? As long as she continued to build, she would never be alone. How would her life be different if she had not contacted the psychic medium looking for help with her depression and anxiety. So will you take the tour? Have you taken the tour? Did you catch something on your camera or hear a voice? I did. The room before and after the stairs to nowhere are dark. I used my cell phone, no flash, and no plexiglass in front of the stairs. Just a rope. No window behind me. I was looking up, so I don't think I caught the whole form in the picture. Do you see it? I have no explanation for what that is, and there's no other odd objects in any of my photos. So maybe it is haunted, and I would recommend visiting. At this time, there are only self-guided tours. So thank goodness you watched this video. You just received a lot more information than I did. 
Hopefully the cafe will be open soon. And they do a lot of events like weddings and a big to do every Halloween. Check out the gift shop. It has great souvenirs. And don't forget to check out the backyard area. They have a haunted house theme shooting range and ax throwing. I hope you've enjoyed what turned into a small documentary on Sarah Winchester. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I will catch you in the next video. P.S. I stayed on the Queen Mary. I had five experiences on that ship. Would you care to, care to hear about it? Leave me a comment. And thanks again for spending some time with me today. And don't forget to sub. I'll catch you guys later.